to, to help us cover this, uh, we have a, a friend of the network, somebody who's on the network, who I've done shows with. Uh, there, he's a great dude. Uh, we got Sonny Verma in the house. Sonny, thanks for coming back. Thanks for coming here. How you doing, man? I'm doing fantastic, John. TJ, nice to meet you. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of your guys' show. I, I'm jealous of that audience you guys have it on a night in, night out basis, and uh, you deserve it. You guys do fantastic content, and I'm really happy for all your guys' success. Wow. Thank you, Sonny. Yeah, and it's nice to meet you too, man. I've heard, uh, you know, so for those that don't know, me and Sonny have actually not met yet, which is crazy <laughs> because, I mean, our, our paths have actually crossed a lot. Yeah. Like, I hear it. Sonny's always like two steps behind me, but we've never really crossed paths now. So it's an honor, man. I appreciate it. Looking forward to having this segment with you. Likewise. Well, uh, like I just said, Sonny, it is, uh, I, I'm, this one worries me a bit. I was there two years ago. I was there in the stands. It was negative 10 degree wind chill, um, which, you know, we love at Michigan, right? Got all bundled up, got the hot cocoa, uh, Maybe a little something extra in the hot cocoa, right? And then, uh, and then you watch that last second kick. Well, now Brett has a chance, and Illinois has a chance to answer that back, um, and they are going to be motivated as hell to do it. Uh, Michigan is one and a half point favorites according to CBS. Um, it's at three thirty p.m. Eastern on CBS and Paramount Plus, so that's a thing. Um, but, but Sonny, as the guest, I always go with you first. What what is kind of your initial reaction to to the matchup here? What do you think about Michigan being ever so slightly favored, um, despite it being at your house at, at Memorial? Well, I mean, it's going to be a fun game. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, Illinois uh, focused their season almost around this game, just in the sense it's the 100 year anniversary of Memorial Stadium. Uh, it's the we're wearing the Red Grange jerseys. Uh, for those of you uh, unfamiliar, I think those. Uh, 1924 or something like that. Red Grange, Michigan at that point hadn't lost a game in two years. And uh, Red Grange in the first half scored four touchdowns in 12 minutes. And Illinois, or sorry, Michigan hadn't given up four touchdowns uh, in the year, like in the entire year uh, up until that point or something like that. So it was a big, it catapulted Red Grange to, you know, ultimately become the, essentially the father of the NFL and, you know, one of the all time greats on the college football scene. And uh, champagne is going to be riveting. It, it would have been riveting if Illinois wasn't five and one. You know, if it was just uh, Illinois was coming in at three and two, which you know a lot of us may have predicted or something like that. Um, it still would have been a very big game. But the fact that Illinois had the season that they have, and you know, it, Michigan's Michigan, you know, the national champion, and you know, CBS is putting this game on national TV for a very big audience. I can't wait. Uh, you know, like you you mentioned. You know, the game two years ago and talk about, you know, putting something else in your uh, hot chocolate. A lot of Illinois fans think the referees had something extra in their hot chocolate <laughs> uh, with some of the calls right before that uh, game winning field goal. But um, certified ball knowers. <laughs> uh, but we can't wait. You know, it, it's I think it's going to be a good one. I'm optimistic. One of my bold predictions before the season started, I think I made five in my preview uh episode of Locked on Illini, which, by the way, if there's any Illini fans in here, I, I do Illini content every single day uh, for Locked on Illini, uh, and that includes weekends. I try to do about a half hour. Uh, please find me on YouTube uh, there. But one of my bold predictions was that I thought Illinois would come in and surprise uh, the world and beat the defending national champions uh, at home. Uh, my reasoning at that point was I knew we wouldn't be favored by any stretch, but just because of what I just described, uh, you know, we've been circling this game for a while now. Brett's been circling this game for a while now after what happened a couple of years ago. And uh, with the show that they're going to put on in Champaign, it's not technically the homecoming, but it's the homecoming game uh, for Illinois, essentially. Um, I think it's going to be a good one, and I'm looking forward to Saturday. Yep. Check out, by the way, the links are right there. Go ahead and give uh, give Sonny a sub and give Sonny a follow. Uh, Moose put the links in the chat as well. TJ, okay. what's your first thought of this matchup? Uh, Michigan better do something about Luke Altmaier because uh, our pass defense ranked 115th in the nation is going to get chewed up if they don't get it figured out. Um, he's having a crazy good year. Uh, 14 touchdowns, one interception, 67% completion, 1,400 yards. And he has a pretty damn good wide receiver in Pat Bryant. So um, 
you know, in, in my opinion, one of the keys to the game, we'll get to keys of the games and prediction, all that, but one of the keys for sure is limit this passing attack. Uh, it, you know, they really need to figure out a way to do that. Now, I'm going to be honest, uh, Sonny, and I'm sure you know, you've looked at the numbers. Our pass defense is atrocious right now. It's 115th in the nation. So, yeah. Um, you know, we're hoping out of the buy, some corrections and adjustments have been made. You know, what is what is your thoughts, Sonny, on this offensive, your uh, Illinois offense versus Michigan defense uh, game within the game? So a lot of Illinois fans, understandably, after that second half debacle against Purdue, have are just jumping in groves off the bandwagon. And, you know, everyone's saying, you know, hammer Michigan, uh, you know, minus one and a half, my, uh, minus three, I think is actually what it was this morning. I love the opposite. Like, you know, granted, I don't think you'd have to be too concerned because just like our offensive game is your guys' defensive weakness, it's the same in reverse. We're having a lot of trouble stopping the run. And, you know, I have to tell you guys that uh, that's something that Michigan does really, really well. But you name Pat Bryant. Pat Bryant is one of the breakout stars of the Big Ten Conference this year. Uh, Luke Altmaier, I was – one of the few guys high on Luke Altmaier last year. You know, I feel like the national narrative was written on him when he had that awful first half against Penn State throwing those four interceptions. Uh, but in his last six starts, he had 10 touchdowns and three interceptions, right? And you mentioned right now he's up to 14 and one this year. So you're talking about 24 touchdowns to four interceptions in his last, uh, what, 10 starts, uh, whatnot. It's like he's making the right decisions and he's, He's confident, and I can't say this enough. Um, anytime you have a good quarterback who believes in this talent, like that can win you any game against essentially anybody. Uh, you know, Michigan's going to be a very tough task. You know, the, the best defense we're going to be facing, but we faced a very good defense just three weeks ago in Penn State, and it was a game that Penn State had circled. Like James Franklin had uh, an unofficial whiteout for that game. Uh, you know, they – really made a big deal out of that game. And I think Penn State at the time was ranked number eight. Illinois came in and with two minutes left in that game was only down 14 to seven. We were in, uh, you know, ultimately it didn't work out in our favor, but it just, it makes me more confident that, you know, Brett has coached this team up, which he has. Uh, something I like to mention to the viewers of Locked on Illini, a lot of people in here might not know. Illinois, according to 24-7, has, is ranked number 18 when it comes to the talent rankings. Like literally dead last when it comes to uh, the high school uh, talent, four stars, three stars, dead last. And yet Brett Bielema right now has this five and one with our only loss coming to uh, at Penn State. You know, and again, it's a game that was within one score with two minutes left. So you know, it's a long way of uh, answering your question. Um Pat Bryant, you named, but we also have four other really good wide receivers, and that's why we've kind of been really good. Zachary Franklin has had the best wide receiver stats of anybody in college football coming into this year. He's had a history in the past with Barry Lenny Jr. when they were together at UTSA. Um, but then we even have younger guys like Colin Dixon, uh, Malik Elzey, uh, all stepping up, and that's kind of what made – Luke Altmaier looked so good this year. Like he knows and he trusts that he's got, you know, three, four guys he can throw the ball to and they're going to come down with it. Yeah. I, uh, I, I will say this. I watched the game against Nebraska um, four touchdowns for Luke Altmaier in that game, uh, including the, the game winner to, uh, to Pat Bryant. Um, really, really impressive because that's a Nebraska team. This isn't your, your Nebraska, your Scott Frost, Nebraska team, right? This is a Nebraska team with a legitimate quarterback, albeit a freshman legitimate quarterback who made a couple of freshman mistakes, but still a really talented quarterback. Um, and the fact that you were able to win that game, I think that spoke volumes for where you guys are at. Uh, I will also point out the super chat, uh, C4 collect five bucks here about what do you think of the receivers from Illinois? Um, we just talked about a couple of them. Um, but here's something I want to ask you about. I expect even with Will Johnson, they will test us with trick plays. Uh, Sonny, what do you, what's your take on like the, the impact Will Johnson will bring and how he can lock down some of the field uh, at times and, and kind of give you some, some additional things to think about? 
Yeah, I mean, and he's going to be a huge factor. You know, it's going to be a, a lot of it's going to be on Barry Lundy Jr., who's our offensive coordinator, basically finding out where Will Johnson is not. Because wherever he isn't, that means you've got three playmakers that you can still uh, go to. Um, for, forgive my ignorance. Like, is Will Johnson a guy who follows a receiver or does he stay on one side of the field? Is he one of those? Like, which one does he tend to do? He will blanket a receiver. Like, so, like, when we played against uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., he blanketed him. Like, it just depends. Sometimes he will stay on one side of the field, but it's, it depends on the matchup. Fair enough. Okay. So then, you know, I'd probably guess he would be uh, guarding Pat Bryant in this particular game. But yes, that's, that's I, he- I would. I would say they're going to put him against Pat Bryant. But with Wink Martindale, you never know. Maybe he's going to be guarding so, some someone random. You, you never know with Wink Martindale. He's He's been a little bit of a loose cannon with his uh, his personnel uh, decision-making at times. Well, see, like having said that, then you you look at guys like Zachary Franklin, who I just mentioned. Um, you know, he's had more receiving yards and I believe touchdowns as well uh, than anyone else in college football coming into – this year, um, Hank Beatty has emerged over the last couple of weeks. It's, you know, you can take w- away one part of Illinois' offense, but the difference about this year's team compared to the last few years is that we have playmakers, at least on the offensive th- side, like in multiples. Uh, you know, our running back is probably going to be gone, Caden Fagan. Uh, he was a surprise uh, absence from the Purdue game, and it looks like he might have a longer term injury, but. Uh, you know, Josh McCray played really well in his place. Josh McCray had a fantastic freshman year. A lot of people remember for Illinois a couple of years ago. And so, uh, you know, we'll see. It's it's the defensive side that I'm more worried about than the offensive side. TJ, any final thoughts on the uh, offense-defense matchup here? Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it just – to me, this this game – like it really comes down to Michigan's pass defense against this offensive attack. I, I feel confident in Michigan's ability to stop the run here. I don't think Illinois is it's competent uh, rushing, but it's not it's not the threat that this passing game can be. Um, so to me, it's about making sure that our back end is handling its job because if not, you know, it could be a long day. Yeah, the sub the sub 100 pass defense definitely gives me pause against a quarterback like Luke Luke Altmeyer and some of these yeah. receivers. Uh, oh, they've man. really got to step it up, and I'd love to see Will Johnson not just be on an island, but but play a little bit more uh, to the receiver uh, like he did against Ohio State and Marvin Harrison Jr. last year. And he didn't win every single time. Uh, but he did get a pretty critical interception against Marvin Harrison Jr. And if they if they take that mentality, uh, then there could actually be some impact there. Um, Elisha, I think, opens up the other side very well uh, with the $5 super chat here. Um, so now that Tuttle is here, I can see Kirk improving. I guess Kirk Campbell. Uh, I think Tuttle will make our offense more explosive. He offers what Orgy and Warren can do, run and pass. Thank you, Elisha, for that. And I think that's a really great opening to Illinois' defense versus Michigan's offense. So two years ago, Illinois' defense looked real good, uh, real good. And you, you, you know, people talked about the offense. They talked about uh, DeVito. They talked about uh, Chase Brown. They talked about the, the – but the defense looked like a world beater. They looked like they could win the Big Ten championship, at least when I saw it at the stadium, right? Um where do you think it's at this year um, against Michigan's offense, which I think shaky is being generous with how it's looked this season so far. Um, what, what's kind of your take on this, this part of the ball here? I mean, it's greatly improved uh, in particular from last year. You referenced the team two years ago, uh, that team as good as it was, it lost three guys to the NFL in the top 70 picks, right? And Illinois isn't Michigan. We don't have four stars waiting in the wings. It takes time. We're a developmental program. And uh, you know, we had a first-time defensive coordinator. Obviously, Ryan Walters was our DC two years ago. He took the job at Purdue. Aaron Henry came in last year, and quite honestly, uh, he struggled uh, to the point where a lot of people this offseason were wondering if he was cut out for the job and whether he was on the – it wouldn't be a hot seat, but I would – Consider he had a pretty warm seat, but the defense has shown him. Uh, now, having said that, we just had literally our worst half of the entire college football season where we gave up like 43 points, I think, to uh, Purdue. 
um, no, 49 points uh, to Purdue. But I try to make it very clear that it was one half. Um, a lot of people who didn't watch the game, which, uh, you know, I understand if you're not a fan of Illinois or Purdue, it's probably on a third or fourth TV. But at halftime, even that game was 24 to three. And Illinois got the ball uh, in the third quarter and they kicked a field goal. It was 27 to three. Uh, Ryan Brown had th- uh, nine yards passing in that first half. So it's not like it was a defensive, you know, clown show the entire game. And for me, I would feel better about that. You know, had the defense been getting ripped up for four quarters, I would be like, OK, did somebody find something? But a couple plays happened in the third quarter, a strip sack fumble and then a defense uh, uh a guy in the secondary who just stumbled and fell, which led to a touchdown. And then, you know, it, it's college football. Momentum shifts. Uh, that just tends to happen. But, you know, one of the reasons that did happen is we were without our best uh, guy in the secondary so far this year, Xavier Scott. He hadn't played. And you know, he was leading the NCAA in interceptions through the first few weeks of the season with some really big and important uh, turnovers. And the guy who had taken his place – Tyler Strain, he got hurt halfway through the game as well. So we were pretty depleted in that second half. Uh, From what I know, um, Xavier Scott should be back, which is a huge relief. Um, You know, not that Michigan has much uh, uh, an arm, you know, an offensive attack that you're necessarily worried about uh, in the air, but still you want your playmakers to be playing because regardless of whether Michigan is struggling or not, it's still Michigan. And the 12 guys that you're going to line up, are probably going to be more talented than the 12 guys that line up uh, opposite of them. But the running game has been an issue for us. Uh, It's been an issue all year long. Kansas ran against us. Uh, Nebraska ran against us. They succeeded. And for some reason, in the second half, they just stopped. Um, The one team that's continued to really just rack up yards on the ground against Illinois was Penn State. And, of course, when you have two stud running backs like they do, they're the one team that just continued. The game plan was run, run, run. And Illinois right now, ironically, because this is a Brett Bielema team, isn't really built like the prototypical Brett Bielema team. This is a team right now, you know, I'm sure we're going to talk about the keys to the game. Illinois needs to get out early, and they need to get a lead early to basically force Michigan's hand into trying to be a little bit more aggressive and uh, not be able to, you know, uh, milk the clock to shorten the game. So, but if Michigan scores early and, you know, their defense is able to kind of go straight after Luke Allmeyer and force Luke Allmeyer into bad throws, then we're going to have a repeat of that Penn State game where despite our offense being as successful as it is, like we had seven points that entire game. So it's not like we can't be stopped. Yeah, for sure. For me, me, uh, there's no question that, Illinois, uh, you know, their run defense is going to be, you know, for them, like, you know, like Sonny mentioned earlier in the show, that's going to be the critical factor for them. Are they going to be able to limit uh, Michigan's attack? That's going to be a big decider for them. Uh, You know, and we will talk about, uh, you know, keys to the game. This will be one of them, Uh, you know, passing, you know, even passing, you you know, I would say Illinois defense has, I would say taken a step back from previous years. Uh, you know, would you say it's, it's fair to say something? Uh, from two years ago, yeah. Uh, from last year, it's a step up. Okay. Okay. But right last now, year, I, I mean, you're talking about one of the worst defenses in the in the country last year. So it, that doesn't take much. Because right now you're ranked 12th in the Big Ten total defense. Mm-hmm. Uh, your your run your rush your rushing defense is 15th. Mm-hmm. Uh, your passing defense is about 11. Mm-hmm. And if you look the year before, <laughs> you're yeah, talking about yeah. 15 and 60. Yeah, it was pretty bad uh, a couple years ago. Well, we all have our we all have our up and down years. I would say this this one uh, jury's still out, but but maybe not as much up as uh, 23 for sure. Uh, a couple of super chats I want to hit real quick. Elisha with the two random but stallions told Will Howard to slide. Hilarious. Uh, Blue Wolverine with the five. YouTube member hit the blue emoji, everybody. Um, I am fine with Tuttle, but for the love of all things, Michigan, please scheme for him and not orgy. 
I'm with you. Uh, and I think that that is a very important component to the offense versus defense matchup. Um, Jack Tuttle uh, actually has doubled or approximately doubled. Uh, so we were, so Michigan was at uh, no points and 2.9 yards per play with Alex Orgy at quarterback in the Washington game. Then Jack Tuttle comes in and scores 17 points and 5.2 yards per play. Still not world beating, but significantly better than than uh, than Alex Orgy. And I just think, to be honest, I, I was a defender of Alex Orgy. I think it was more a scheme fit than anything. I, I just think Jack Tuttle, this thing was designed for Jack Tuttle. The insider said it was going to be Jack Tuttle. Jack Tuttle got injured. And so then you had your musical chairs for a couple of games. But now Jack, now he's back, and he seems like a competent enough quarterback, which is really all you need when you have Kalel Mullings, which who we haven't really talked about too much. But he's such a, I mean, he's he's such a game changer when it comes to you need five yards, he'll get you seven. You need one one yard, he'll get you two. He's that he's that uh, person who's going to move the pile. So um, absolutely. Uh, I think scheming for him is kind of what Kirk Campbell wanted to do all along. Yeah, I would say, you know, I, w- I wouldn't be concerned about the the scheme being for Jack Tuttle. I think Ballas was right about what Michigan was trying to do with Tuttle heading into fall camp. Um, I think the offense was actually designed for Jack Tuttle. And I think what they tried to do was make the players adjust to the scheme instead of adjusting the scheme to the players. And I think that's why you saw the uh, the poor approach to the offense with uh, Davis Warren in the beginning. Then they, you saw in the Arkansas State game, they started to adjust the scheme to him. And then you saw the same thing with Alex Orgy. And then they adjusted the scheme to Alex Orgy. Uh, the, coach seems, the coach seems to be a, a bit reactive to that, but they finally have their guy at quarterback. We'll see what they can do, man. I mean, I'm excited about it because it's it's new and there's hope. You know, we hope that it's improved from what we've seen. Uh, hopefully the coaching staff has a good game plan for this game because we need it. Like, Sonny, we, I'm going to be honest, man. We, we need the victory. That Washington loss has a bad taste in our mouth. We want our season to survive. So, I, I mean, I know you know we're coming. We're coming to get the victory, but I know Illinois. I know Brett Bielema, he wants his victory too. Yeah, I mean, if you really think about it, you know, Indiana is a story of the Big Ten uh, right now, you know, with their early success. But if Illinois can come in with a victory on Saturday, you know, I'm not delusional. Uh, Two weeks from now when we go to Oregon, we're going to lose that game. But after that, we've basically finished the tough part of our schedule and we should be favored the remainder of that schedule. So not that I'm even hinting that it could happen, but I'm saying it's plausible that if the ball bounces correctly, you know, in Illinois can be 10 and two at this point at the end of the year with their only losses to being uh, what I'm going to assume is a one loss Penn state team. I'm assuming they lose, um, you know, to uh, Ohio state and Oregon who may or may not have one loss. That's quite the resume, especially when you, you know, compare them to an Indiana who is racking up wins, but they're just now entering their tough part of the schedule and we'll see how legitimate they are once they kind of have to go up against, you know, some of the more physical teams in the big 10. So it's, it's a huge game for Illinois too, not just on the field because of all the celebrations that's going to be going on, but for the long-term implications of what this season, like the ceiling of the season could be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a, a couple are showing some appreciation for Oregon. Uh, and, and I just want to say quack, quack, uh, after that masterful performance, um, and uh, great job, Dan Lanning, with the big galaxy brained 12 men on the field maneuver. Great job. Um, so with all that said, keys to the game. Uh, this is this is that revenge game for Brett. It's at your house, Sonny. Um, what does Illinois need to do to pull out the victory at Memorial? That place is going to be rocking, uh, it's going to be a sold out crowd. Um, Illinois has done really, really well this year. I think every single game they've scored on their opening drive. And they're going to have to repeat that uh, on Saturday. I think the key for Illinois is going to try to go up two scores because then all of a sudden the pressure is on Michigan to try to keep up. And, you know, their game plan of trying to, you know, run out the clock all of a sudden, you know, may not be uh, the best method to win. So 
key for sure is to embrace the crowd, embrace that energy. Like I said, it's going to be rocking. Try to get up early because all of a sudden, you know, if if the defense can zero in on Luke Altmaier, then we're in trouble. Our offensive line, the interior has struggled. Our tackles, both transfers coming in, J.C. Davis and Melvin Priestley, they've been fine. But the interior of the offensive line has been struggling. So, you know, as long as we can keep an honest running game, uh, you know, just keep the defense honest somewhat and let Luke do what he's essentially done all year long. I can't change my opinion now. Uh, you know, again, if, if in the offseason, Michigan probably would have been a 10 point favorite uh, in this game. And now the fact that Illinois is five and one coming into this game and Michigan has had a couple of struggles, it'd be silly of me to jump off my prediction now. So, I mean, I still think, you know, Illinois can come out victorious. Am I super confident on it? No, but am I more confident than 90% of my fellow Illini fans? Uh, certainly. Yeah, interesting. So you would say, so you would say that, you know, the, uh, the Illini fans are not, you would say the confidence isn't high. Oh, they're all. Really? They, they, my post game for that Purdue game was like the Titanic was uh, sinking. Um, really? There's a lot of just falling, you know. But again, you know, it's just it's I think it's because we're that's what we're used to. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's Illinois. We're not exactly even two years ago. The, the program we we're talking that team, which, in my opinion, had the best defense uh, in the country that year. We were seven and one. Going into that Michigan game, yeah. we ended that season eight and five, you know, and they, so there's a lot of Illinois fans who are just waiting for the same thing to happen this year. You know, my only argument to that is in years past, including that year. You know, games like Saturday would have ended up with a loss. You know, it happened last year. We lost a, an 18-point lead to Wisconsin. We lost a last minute to Northwestern. Winning any of those games would have made us bowl eligible last year. But now in year four, Brett Bielema, you know, he's always talked about, uh, and he's been saying this for the last two, three years, ever since he took over the job at Illinois, he's like, I've got to get this program from fearing the end of the game, saying how are we going to blow it, to be like, hey, uh, we're fine. Watch us win it. And this year, you know, he did it against Kansas. Uh, Nebraska was also an overtime victory in Lincoln. And obviously, you know, having that dreadful second half where everything that could go wrong went wrong against Purdue, but still coming back uh, and winning. And keep in mind, Purdue had taken the lead, 43-40 with 50 seconds left. So we had the ball back. We, you know, we, again, Luke found, I believe it was Pat Bryant and Hank Beatty, got us in the field goal range. We tied it and in overtime, you know, uh, Illinois scores first, Purdue comes back, goes for two for the win. And with the way our defense has been playing the entire second half, I thought I, I had a sinking feeling in my stomach, but the, they made the right play call. Uh, they were able to sack Brown and, you know, come away with the victory, which again, would not have happened in years past. Yeah. yeah. TJ, right, so what would you my, say your keys are? Yeah, so my keys to the game are we got to establish the run. This is a weak point to uh, Illinois' uh, you know, defense, uh, their team as a whole. We have to do that. I think we can. I think uh, Clem Mullins is gonna gonna have a good day, especially with the uh, the change with Crippen and Percy at right tackle. Miles Hinton is gonna be back. This, in my opinion, this is Michigan's best offensive line unit. I think we're gonna see that Saturday. I'm looking forward to that. The the other key is we gotta protect Tuttle. Please protect Tuttle. Allow Tuttle to go through his progressions. I do believe if you allow Tuttle to go through his progressions, he will be able to drive the field. Uh, the field and we should be able to score and capitalize on our drives as well as sustain our drives. So please protect Tuttle. And then the last thing is we have got to get pressure on Luke Allmeyer. If we can get pressure on him, make him uncomfortable, then that should help the back end of the defense. And I feel very good. I would feel very good about Michigan if we were able to accomplish those three things. Yeah. The question that I want to ask it just it, I want to ask it to the coaches. So more of a metaphorical uh, question is, can you actually stick to the run if it's working? If it's working, keep going with it. Kalel Mullings is your guy. And there's been this hesitancy, hesitancy for whatever reason to go all into that. Yeah. Um, for, for whatever reason, you see drives with him in there and he does very well. And then let's put Donovan Edwards in because 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 you got to make him happy, too. Right. So we can give everybody a participation trophy, mm -hmm. um, but but in the reality, the reality is if you run Kalel and you run him in different ways, 
Um, not just like straight up the A-gap, but he can do that. Um, and you combine that with some Donovan. And you could uh, like have them both in there. And you don't know which way it's going. Um, I, I also think Wink Martindale needs to be smarter about how he deploys. Um, I don't want to see Mason Graham, Kenneth Grant rotated out uh, with, with second string people in critical moments. Um, when I saw that against Washington, I wanted, I literally was banging my head on the table uh, and, and got a little dizzy there for a second. Cause I'm like, what the hell is that? Uh, you have a critical situation and you're going to put the second string in. Um, not only that, but yeah, Will Johnson at times has just been on an Island. Um, he hasn't been, they haven't been putting him in man to the level that they did last year when that's really his strength. Cause if he's in man, he's going to get you uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, receivers can't handle it and he'll pick you off. Um, and so I think Michigan needs to kind of get right and remember 2023 and remember you pound the rock. If it's working smash, everybody can hit the smash emoji if you want, because that's the mentality, right? The key for Illinois, I think is, Wink Martindale's having the, a bad day like he's had a lot of games and he does the same stupid things that he's been doing the last couple of games and rotating people too soon and uh, and some of this the bad schematic decisions. And I also think that, y- you know, y- you pick Jack Tuttle off a couple of times as we saw against Washington and Luke Altmeyer has himself a four touchdown day with Michigan's uh, 111th or 15th, whatever it is, uh, ranked pass defense in the country. So there's keys for both sides. And I think that the if I had to boil it down to one sentence, it's um, they, they whoever plays their their best style of their football going to win the game. That's that's what I would say um, with that. And, and with that, it's it's prediction time. Uh, Sonny, it sounded like you were you're pretty high on the Illini, um, and uh, you might be predicting a victory. So let's hear it. Prediction: uh, Who do you think's going to win, and what do you think the score might be? Again, I'm not going to say high on the Illini. I just feel like I would be betraying my viewers if all of a sudden I changed my bold prediction from uh, the off season. So I'm going to stick with that. Uh, I'm going to say 24-13. Uh, and basically, uh, I know we don't normally give up 24 points, uh, or you guys don't give up 24 points, but it's more of a force you guys to try to make plays at the end of the game. Xavier Scott, who hopefully is playing, um, makes one of his, you know, maybe we get a pick six or at least an interception that gets us uh, close to uh, you know your territory, and we get a cheap touchdown at the end to kind of make the score bigger than what the game's really going to be. Yeah, all right. So I have uh, 13. What an insult. But uh, uh, so I have us 24-21 Michigan. I think the boys uh, regroup. I think the coaching staff learns from their mistakes. I think we make proper adjustments. I think they are starting to put the best players at the right positions. Um, I think we're hungry. And I think we're going to go into that. I think we're going to go on the road. We're going to get this victory. Uh, and I'm hoping we have a hell of a good a hell of a post game, John. Uh, if not, it's going to be hell in the post game. I'll tell you that it's going to be a wild one. And uh, you know, on top of that, um, we really need this victory because if if the trajectory of this season is going to take a hard dive if we take this out. Yep. Uh, yes, I think Sharon Moore knows he's got to put his best people, his best plays. He can't just like coast, go vanilla, um, and let's save a bunch of stuff for Oregon. No, no, no. You lose this game, you're you're screwed. You're not getting into the playoff uh, because there's no way Michigan goes and runs the table the rest of the way. The schedule's too hard. Um, so I, I think um, I think it's going to be 21-17, Michigan. They get that they get that dub when they need it most. Um, before we get to final thoughts, Sonny, uh, we do have uh, one more super chat that uh, related to this game, which I think uh, he is our one of our historians yeah, um, and the host media. of our Alabama show here, uh, Jackson Johnson with the five. Uh, Friday will be the 100th anniversary of the Red Grange one-man performance against Michigan, where Illinois won the matchup 39-14. to 
Exactly right. And again, uh, one thing you guys will notice on Saturday, we're going to be playing in uh, what looks like the leather uniforms from way back then. It's going to be fun. Uh, Brett Bielema for three or for two or three years has been on Nike's back to get special jerseys just for that game. And so, uh, you know, it it came through and uh, it's going to be fun. And thanks, everybody, for putting your uh, score prediction. we got Tim Prangley here, Trojan Conquest live in the house. Um, so thank you all. There we go. We got 34, 24, you, Michigan's going to score 34 points. I, I would love that. I will be so happy coming onto the post game show. If Michigan scores 34 points, holy crap, that would be amazing. Um, let's hope moose. Uh, well, with that said, Sonny, um, I, as always, I want to thank you for, uh, taking your time. Uh, being patient with us and then coming on here and giving your takes on Illinois. Um, Locked on Illini, Illini cast, voice of college football. uh, Give people a final thought and where they can find you. Yeah, again, I do uh, a lot of content really on YouTube at this point. I've got two Illinois channels. Uh, Definitely find me at Locked on Illini. That's where, again, I'm throwing out 30 minutes every single day. Um, you can also find me at Big Ten Show with uh, another friend of the voice of college football, Justin Adams. He does uh, the Nebraska channel. Me and him do a, a weekly Big Ten show. Um, you know, just talk about the conference uh, in general. I also help out here at the voice of college football with uh, the Texas Longhorns. I just recently moved out to Austin, so I'm kind of in the scene. And I, I, I get the vibes of the city, especially with the team. Uh, doing as well as it does. But you know, more important than all of that, definitely just hit the like button here and support these guys who are always grinding away. Every time I open up YouTube, I see you guys on my screen and I, I always appreciate other people who you know continue to grind. Thank you. That means a lot, Sonny. Um, yeah, everybody, I'm going to ask every single one of you in this chat right now to go over, support Sonny, hit the subscribe button on all of these shows that they're putting on here. Um, go ahead and give him some follows. Wolverine Nation comes through with the following. Um, I think all of our guests have gone up, and I, I want to. I want that same vibe uh, for Sonny. So let's let's get some follows going for him. Thank you to Jackson for always being here and doing that with us. Um, Sonny, we will see you soon. Be on uh, locked on uh, here. Uh, so we're excited for that. And uh, and thanks thanks for stopping by, man. Thank you guys for uh, having me. Good luck every game except for Saturday. Yeah, we're, we're going to be talking, just so you know, we're going to be talking some shit leading up to that game, all right? <laughs> you know where to find me. Yeah. There it is. All right. All right. Uh, thanks, Sonny.